Hello, I'm Claire and as part of Create to Relate with Ditchley Museum of Art and Craft I've been playing around with some stencils today. I've made a practice one. Here we go. And I've tried a few different effects with different materials to see how they turn out. And now I'll show you how to do some of these techniques so you can try them at home. You need some good strong paper so that it doesn't go all floppy and fall apart when you make stencils out of it. Cardboard would be really good as well. You need some scissors to cut things out. You need some colouring materials. So I've got pastels, pencils, chalk pastels would be really good. I've got some paint and some useful tools that are quite fun to use. A sponge, a big paintbrush that's got quite stiff bristles so it's not floppy and a toothbrush works really well as well an old one not one that you're going to use again so the first job is to design and cut out your stencils I've decided I want to make a picture inspired by under the sea so I've drawn some sea creatures some fishes can you see those and now I'm going to cut them out So you have to be really careful when you cut them out. The way I'm going to do it, I'm going to cut in from one edge into the middle and then I'm going to try and cut all the way around my shape. I've tried to not make it too complicated. There we go. So I've tried to cut it all in one go, so there's only one cut to the outside. And I'm going to keep the middle because I can use that bit as well later. To make my stencil stronger, I've got I've actually got some masking tape. If you don't have any, it doesn't matter. You can just hold it down. But I'm going to stick that line back together so that it's all one piece again. And that's my first stencil. I'm going to take some time and cut out all the others. Okay, so I've made loads of stencils. I've kept the insides if I can. I've made an octopus. And I'm ready to start stenciling. I'm going to experiment and try all my different materials. So here's my first fish. I'm going to place the stencil on top of my paper, spread it nice and flat. And then I'm just going to colour in. I'm going to try drawing lines with this one. This is an oil pastel. If you've got chalk pastels, they're really good because you can scribble it all on and then smudge it in with your fingers to make sure you fill the whole of the space. There we go. There's my first stripy fish. So oil pastels worked well. Let's try another one. Just going to use colouring pencils this time. So it doesn't matter if you colour onto the stencil, you just need to make sure you go all the way up to all of the edges so that you get a nice clean line when you take the stencil away. These are my smiley fishes. And before I take it away, I'm going to add some other colours to this one. So maybe a bit of orange at the back. Blend them in. Bit of yellow crayon at the front. I'm just playing around and trying different things. Two fishes. For this next one I'm going to try paint and the sponge. So I've got some blue paint in there. I'm going to dip my sponge in and then get rid of the excess on the side of my pot so it's not too soggy. And then holding down the stencil carefully, just going to dab on top. Try not to let your stencil move because then you'll smudge. Again, go right up to the edges. Here we go. Woo! Sponging works really well. There he is. Next I'm going to try my octopus. And I'm going to try mixing materials. So first I'm going to start with some oil pastel 
And I want to give him stripy legs. This one's quite fiddly. You have to carefully press the stencil against the paper. I've cleaned my sponge and now I've got pink paint. I'm going to carefully dab it on top. Hey! Oh, it's quite good, that one. So when I'm dabbing my sponge, I'm just getting rid of the excess on the side of the pot. Because you don't want too much so that it squidges everywhere. Hold down the stencil. The next thing I'm going to try with my toothbrush can get really messy, so I'm going to go outside. So I've come outside because we're going to flick some paint around now, and I know from doing museum club in real life at the museum that loads of the museum club members love flicking paint around, but it can make a real mess. So if you can't do it outside, you could use a cardboard box and put your picture in the box and then do the flicking inside the box. The first thing I'm going to do is take the pieces that I saved from earlier and place them like a puzzle back over my creatures that I've printed because I don't want them to get paint flicked on them. And now it's time to have a go with my toothbrush. So I'm going to dip it in some paint. I've got some green paint here. And then making sure there's no one around that you're going to flick paint all over take your toothbrush and with your finger start flicking paint wherever you want it to go it's probably best to save this for a day when it's not very windy otherwise it's all going to blow all over the place if you don't have an old toothbrush you can use you can use a paintbrush and flick that and another way to try it so you don't get it all over your fingers to hold another brush or a stick, place your painty brush on top of it and then gently tap it and you get some bigger blobs then which is quite nice. One thing I'd say not to do is to flip your paintbrush backwards and forwards because you'll get it all over yourself and anyone around and everything around. Okay, I think that's enough green. I'm gonna clean my brushes up and have a go with some blue. Okay, blue paint for under the sea. Try flicking from quite far away so you get a nice even spread all over the page. But you might want to focus on some bits, especially around the edges of where your stencils are, so that a sharp silhouette is left when you take the pieces away. I think I'm going to put more paint down this end, at the bottom, where all the dark creatures live. Okay, I think I'm going to stop now and leave it to dry. I brought my paper indoors now that it's got paint splattered all over it. And now I'm going to remove the puzzle pieces to reveal the clean bits underneath. There we go, there's my speckled bubbly underwater scene. Grumpy fish at the bottom. I use quite strong paper for my stencils so they're still in quite good condition. So I can keep using those over and over again. I've done some little individual prints because I think they look quite nice on their own. Some starfish. You can use stenciling on loads of different surfaces, as long as it's flat and you've got the right paint to stick to it. So you could stencil on your furniture, on the walls, on fabric, you could decorate clothes and bedding, as long as you've got fabric paint. Anything you can think of really. As well as my final artwork, I quite like how some of these bits of stencils have turned out. Maybe I could use those for some collage or something. Anyway, it'll be great to see how your stenciling has turned out. 
You can use the hashtag create to relate to share your work. And that's it. Thank you. Bye.